Hi everyone, Greg here. So today I'm gonna make a Linux command. So I'm gonna start with just creating a directory for the project. Right, I'm gonna use an editor, so uh, you can use whatever editor you want. Uh, for the sake of tradition, I'm gonna make a Hello World program. Okay, there we are. Now I'm gonna compile it. So, okay, and now I should have my Hello World program running. Now, when, when you look at this, main is a function. It has input and output. So the output is the integer, and that is what returns here. It returns zero. Now, how can you have output in a main function? Well, basically, the output of the main function is the exit status of the program or the command. So I can call this up in the bash by typing in this. Uh, zero that is the exit status of the previous command so if I do an ls and now I call up the exit status of that it is zero again by convention in Linux when you see zero that means everything went just fine so if I now do an ls of something that doesn't exist and I look at the exit status of that I see a different value so that's for the output now for the input I can also have input here and those will basically be the variables or the arguments the parameters that you give with the uh, command so there we are now that's basically the argument count uh, and v probably stands for vector you can really call this something else if you want um, so this will contain a list of the argument the first argument will be the name of the program itself and then it will be followed by whatever you typed in behind the uh, command name on the command line um, so a, a string this will be a list of strings a string is an array of characters so you see a character here so a string is an array of characters and this will be an array of arrays so that's why the double pointer is there so I'm gonna do print F uh, um, yeah I think that's all right then um, I am going to compile that again and I'm gonna put an argument behind that okay and then it tells me you typed hello FFF okay so let's say that I want to have a command which requires the name of a file to be added after the command so So there will always be at least one argument because that's the name of the command itself. So if it's fewer than two, then you basically typed in nothing after the command name and then I will ask you to type something in. So, right, now let's say, no, I can just do this. Let's say I put nothing after hello and then it says give a file name, right? Uh, and you see that the, uh, the exit status will be one in this case right because something actually went wrong okay 
Uh, what's the next thing I can do? I can check whether the file name actually does exist, whether it relates to a real file. So I had some code prepared earlier. Um, so I'm just paste that in there and the header file. Right, so access is basically just a syscall which checks whether uh, a file does exist. So here, if it's minus, if the result of that is minus one, that means the file does not exist. Um, let, me, let me change that to two. Um, yeah, that looks all right. So let me check that again. Give a file name, and then if I do give a file name, it will say file does not exist. Let me, um, forgot to put a new line there. And then if I give a file name that really does exist, um, all right, then it, it just says hello world. Okay. Uh, what what's the next thing I want to do? I'm, I'm gonna replace that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add some color um, because it would look nicer. So I have a program here that shows you how to do the colors. So if I run this, you see all the colors. The colors are supported by the kernel, right? They are uh, they're basically implemented by outputting a specific string of characters to um, to the standard out, basically. So if you look at how I wrote this, it's just a bunch of printfs of very specific um, series of characters. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back to the other directory. Mm. I'm going to paste this here. And when you decide to give it another color, it sticks to that color until you tell it to go back to normal. So I'll have to put two of those on either side. So uh, this is going to be K yellow and K normal. Here, I'm going to put an error. Right. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this again, right? What if I give it um, a bad file name? Then I see it in red, and if I give no file name, it does it in yellow. Okay, what's the next thing I could do? I could um, just check the username that owns the file. Okay, so here again I have some code pre written uh, because this is not about teaching C or anything, this is just specifically about showing how to do a how to do a command. So you need more header files. Um, so I'll just do a stat on the path name and that will give me information about the file. Uh, I pass on the address of a struct. Um, let me see now. So this is the struct and this is the information I can get about the file. What I'm interested here is the user ID. 
the ID of the owner. So that ST underscore UID. Um, so that is what I pass on here to another function in order to get the actual username in the form of a string. So um, Sure, why not make this green while we're at it? There we are. Okay, and if I give it a, a false, um, a false file name, that still works. Okay, so that's basically. Uh, I have my command now. I'm gonna rename that to user. Right now, this is not necessarily a very useful command, but uh you know it's about the concept now what i want to be able to do is something like this right type it in the way you normally would type a command so that the shell will actually find it so if i type in ls okay there is actually a file on your computer called ls and the shell will execute that command how does it find ls well basically it looks in here so the environment variable path you see a whole bunch of paths and they are separated by those uh, colons and it will just look in any one of those see if it finds ls in any one of those directories and then it will run that file so if i do which ls then this command tells me it will find ls in the forward slash bin directory so all i have to do now is i need to copy uh this program user to uh to one of those directories so i can just do Oh, what am I doing? Um, so I need to copy user to bin, not the other way around. Um, and so now this should work. So if I do user and then a file name, then it will tell me this particular file has on root. Okay. Um, this will only work uh, not system wide, but for the specific user that I'm using right now and maybe that's all you want and in which case you're done if you want it to work uh, system wide then you probably want to copy it to uh, the user bin uh, um, so I'm gonna have to use sudo for this um, yeah, so if I do this get the password right. okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the other program right and so now this should work system-wide okay now what has happened here is the bash remembered the directory in which it found user and now it says well it doesn't find it anymore but if i reload uh bash uh, that should be fixed so there you are okay and so now i've created the command user on my system system wide so that's how you make a linux command 
I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.